Hi, I'm Brian Ames, Senior Technical Program Manager for the Deep Brew Machine Learning Platform at Starbucks. Um, sorry that we can't be there together in person. I am here in sunny Seattle and uh, happy to meet everyone here. This presentation is uh, a way for me to share with my peers some of the lessons learned about building machine learning platform at scale in a large company. Uh, first, a little bit about Deep Brew. Uh, about two and a half years ago, machine learning was not a thing at Starbucks. Uh, we happened to have a bunch of uh, very talented people and some fantastic data and some leadership that wanted us to get into that game. And so we set out to build a platform because it's very difficult to deploy things into production at any large company, uh, and Starbucks was no exception. Uh, along the way that we worked hard, sacrificed, built the system, and we gained a few fans. Satya Nadella of Microsoft brought us up as one of his favorite initiatives in the Microsoft Build Conference in 2019 when conferences were still happening in person. And uh, the CEO of the company, Kevin Johnson, uh, is a big fan of the initiative and uh, has mentioned it to Wall Street uh, and given us some notoriety. In addition, we had some wins put into our sales by some strategic initiatives by competitors. My, um, uh, McDonald's made a purchase about a year and a half ago or so uh, of a company called Dynamic Yield that was uh, designed to bring reinforcement learning and machine learning to McDonald's. Uh, they did pay $300 million for it. Uh, the day after that announcement, we did get a call from the C-suite saying, do we have a way to respond to this problem? And then the fortunate answer was, yes, we did. Uh, and yes, we do. Uh, Deep Brew has a lot of the capabilities of dynamic yield. Uh, there are definitely key pieces that are complex, and uh, we don't know exactly what's happening with everybody's machine learning uh, application. But because we have a platform, and the ability to reach uh, numerous touch points, uh, we were able to respond that we could, and uh, we subsequently proved that out. Specifically, one of the areas where machine learning is starting to have an impact is uh, in customer interactions on things like drive-throughs. And in a COVID world, this is more important than ever. Uh, so we wanted to have a notion of, for every single store that had a drive-through, could we personalize the recommendations that are appearing on the screen uh, for that store saying that a Southern California store might be different from a uh, main store and uh, each one of these would have its own distinctive personality inside of different contexts, day of the week, time of the day, temperature, uh, amount of traffic flowing through the store. Each, each one of these things is something that we can have an awareness of. And so we use the platform to sprint basically to build a digital drive-through system and uh, we're able to do that rapidly and we're now live in every single drive-through store uh, in the United States with a machine learning system using a really nice piece of technology, a DQN. So advanced technology, ability to deploy, deploy quickly and some advanced brains is uh, a really nice unlock for Starbucks. This whole thing works because Starbucks has fantastic data and a lot of people built the foundation. Uh, the foundation is what we call our enterprise data analytics platform, EDAP. That's the lake where we bring in all the data from all these different sources. Uh, DeepRu lives in that same Azure subscription as the lake. So we're able to uh, rapidly take data out of the lake, load it into our DeepRu platform, and then we have a compute layer there that speaks JSON via API to the rest of the world. And all those pretty little dots at the bottom are all the different touch points that we can reach. Mobile application, digital drive-through, websites, social media. These are all things that we can speak to. But this was the, the reason why it's hard to put together a machine learning platform, and I'm sure you'll see this slide many times inside of the conference, is because it's... Um, it's a cross-functional solution. 
it's not set it and forget it in any way and it has a lot of complexity so if you have a nice piece of code let's say you have Thompson sampling it's actually a, a tiny piece of code you can do incredible things but you can only do it if you navigate this entire universe and so in a matrixed organization it can be very difficult to bring all these teams together and understand how important it is to have sort of excellence across each one of these dimensions in order to train your model appropriately and have it give the results that everybody wants. So this is a very challenging landscape and it's one of the reasons why it's difficult to take a concept uh, from somebody's brain or some research paper and deploy it at scale uh, in, a, in a large organization. So I want to talk about our lessons learned in the, the seven deadly sins uh, to help you navigate from whatever concept you have to production at scale where the deep root platform uh, will provide nearly a billion recommendations uh, to our customers uh, and they'll be highly personalized and the machine is growing beautifully. Uh, but to get here, we had to sort of navigate and learn these hard lessons of the seven deadly sins. So sin number one is has nothing to do with the business case. It has nothing to do with the technology. It's has to do with how your machine learning system resonates with other people inside the organization. Because if you think back to that last slide, you're going to need a lot of friends, you're going to need a lot of alignment, and you're going to have to win some battles. And uh, that takes camaraderie, it takes people being on the same page, and it takes, uh, it, honestly, it takes a smile from a few of the right people. And so we had uh, a specific problem that we wanted to uh, solve first with Deep Brew. And that was that our recommendation engine, the current one that we had before Deep Brew, kept recommending uh, bacon sandwiches to vegetarians. And a lot of people in the C-suite were vegetarians and they said, hey, that's a problem that we really want to solve. And so we didn't, like we, we had a business case, we had like gone through all these things, but very few things put as much wind into our sails as this ex senior executive saying, yeah, I would love it if I, as a vegetarian, wouldn't see bacon. And so that set of smiles, it almost became a talking point for us that was outsized in its influence in getting problems solved for us. So we could talk about, you know, n tens of millions of dollars and all the strategic impact. But uh, when it came down to it, um, the conversation, the currency of this whole thing was, Hey, we can uplift some people's lives and it's a problem that we all want to solve together and we know it's difficult to solve unless you have reinforcement learning in there and we can provide it so uh in this grading uh scheme scheme that i put together for us uh if you can see and have those conversations somebody is actually at a very high level is smiling about this or you can have the universe of people smiling about it you get two points and that means basically it doesn't give you a golden ticket at all. It just means you can continue your work. Uh, so it's two points if you have a smile. It's one point if you just have enough air cover and people are sort of like, yeah, that sounds good, or they're reliant on the business case. You can give yourself a point for that. But if you are ever in the position of saying, hey, we have the technology and we think it's a great idea and you can't get a smile or can't get the business case together, you get zero points. And it's not the end of the world. It just means that you're going to have a hard time building the coalition that's necessary. You're going to have to find points somewhere else inside this little seven deadly sins. And you can certainly continue building on your own time, but it's not the path to production. You're going to need more points than you have right now. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is even if you have people smiling, if you're talking about a production system, you need to have some source of truth that allows you to define that you will do no harm to existing operations. So machine learning, different from other software, other software can make other promises, but because it's a, a system that can be uh, involved with uh, statistical optimization in, in under conditions of uncertainty, uh, you it's very hard to you add a system and know that it's right every single time. And so a mistake that can be made is you put too much power into the hands of the machine learning model and it actually makes mistakes and it can shoot itself in the foot. So what we did and what you want to do is always have a source of truth dashboard or, or mechanism to be able to know 
yourself and your team that the machine is never goofing up in a significant way. And so what we did is we created a set of dashboards based off the existing recommender and we modeled that out and we had aligned KPIs and we were able to show exactly how our system performed relative to the other system. And we said, we're just not gonna turn up the knob on this thing for traffic until we've outperformed this uh, and we can prove it with the numbers. And so here we are in our system. Give yourself one, two points if you have a dashboard and you can say, here's, here's the exact value of the system as it operates right now and we're going to outperform it and we're gonna prove it, uh, that's two points. If you have only an expert or you think you can expose the data, that's nice, but it's not the whole story. Give yourself one point. And if you just don't have that data or if somebody's saying that they're the uh, custodians of that data and they're not ready to share it with you, again, you're not blocked, but it's gonna make it diff difficult for you to build your case. And you could actually, uh, if you go too far, wind up shooting yourself in the foot uh, and getting caught later and you could have a machine learning system that basically commits suicide by making mistake too many mistakes. So um, in our case, we are uh, hyper-focused. Uh, we're checking those dashboards uh, quite frequently. Uh, I used to have uh, eight dashboards showing on my screen at any given time during the day where I was monitoring the health of the system and uh, ensuring that there was a do no, do no harm promise that we were keeping. Deadly sin number three is, um, this one is, is, is extremely delicate. Uh, there are all sorts of different kinds of machine learning, but the kind of machine learning that Deep Roo interacts with is it's knowledge based and it can be subjective. A person can have dozens of years of experience and be some of, one of the best people in the world at doing their job. Uh, when they hear that machine learning is coming in, they might be quite skeptical. And the story that everybody here will probably know is the Lisa Dull uh, story and Move 37 of AlphaGo and how we can have humans that are fantastic at their jobs, but machine learning can actually learn things that are complex and subjective uh, in ways that it could never before. But that doesn't mean that people are going to like it. And so, in this uh, ranking system, if everybody has had a conversation about the impact, the economic impact and the professional impact on the people that are going to be experiencing these changes due to machine learning, uh, that's fantastic. You can get great alignment. But uh, if you haven't had that conversation or if it hasn't explicitly uh, been uh, aligned, uh, you get only one point. And if you're saying that this is all going to come later, uh, again, not blocked, but what you might hear is uh, water cooler chat, or you might get people reaching out to you saying, what's the implication for my team? And any team that feels threatened by a system will uh, rightfully uh, wonder if that should be prioritized or wonder when those conversations are going to happen. So this slide deck doesn't talk about when that conversation needs to happen. Uh, but it does say that you will have an easier time if everybody knows uh, what the economic Im impact is. So it's something for leadership to consider as they're building machine learning systems or sponsoring machine learning systems. Deadly sin number four is uh, a production system has to be all about security. And it's often true that the people that are the originators of an idea, the business can originate an idea. Hey, we have a problem that we wanna solve. No bacon for vegetarians. And you can pass it over to a data scientist. Hey, can you see the patterns uh, in the data? And can you make recommendations based off of this history plus X code and Y code and uh, make sure that we reduce the, the likelihood that we're uh, presenting uh, vegetarians uh, with bacon those are all people that do not live necessarily in the security world. And to be in production, your middle name needs to be security. And so what we did, we, you know, my team came out of the business side of this, is that we immediately made best friends with some great people in security. They want to help. And we said, what, what do we need to do uh, to 
uh, not make a, make this a difficult assignment for you? How can we take on the most work that we possibly can? And so um, they explained some of this to us, and we just set out to learn as quickly as possible. Uh, threat models, they gave us a, you know, basically a 100-point checklist. Here are all the things that you guys need to know and learn and be able to test and prove. And we did it. So our jobs became cross-functional because we wanted to uplift that team. Uh, and they were happy to lend their expertise, but uh, we needed to enter that space and be really good partners to them. Sin number five is uh, no passion for operations. A machine learning system is not useful if you don't have an end-to-end -end timing chart and know that you're getting the right feedback into your system. Uh, and so we have had uh, moments where we felt like, well, operations can be somebody else's problem, or can we stay in our own silo and just measure it? But it turns out that that's a difficult place to be. So in a, the grading scheme, if you have everything instrumented and you have one person, in my case, me, have an exact timing chart that knows the end-to-end -end system, including a feedback loop and the entire cadence, and it's all documented, and you have a real-time way to inspect a timing chart, two points, you know, that's that's a wow. And in, in many parts of the ops world, that's that's a dream, but you definitely need it for a machine learning system. So uh, two points for that. One point, if you only can instrument your own little part of the equation. So if you're saying um, you're only gonna measure it to your own AP, API, but you don't have visibility to the edge, or if you don't have instrumentation on the uh, overall feedback loop, one point, you're making progress, but you're still going to have blind spots. And if you ever say, hey, ops is somebody else's problem, uh, you you have a real challenge there. This might be more than just uh, go ahead and build more. Uh, you might find that it's a little bit of a dead end or expensive to get out of the corner that you put yourself into because you will start to hear people saying, well, this looks kind of hacky. This looks like you didn't. It looks like you're creating a problem for ops. Uh, so that's never a position you want to be in. Uh, uh, deadly sin number six is having people that are multi-threaded or uh, have conflicting priorities. Uh, this is a complex, you know, flashing back to that screen that before of the, the landscape to get things done. This is a complex world and it is not a snap of the fingers. And so you really want a team that can finish each other's sentences, feel strongly about each other, feel strongly about the project, and has enough time and space to work through the difficulties of, of making this happen. So two points, if you're having multiple stand-ups per week uh, and you have people that can finish each other's sentences and everybody is uh, deeply familiar with the technology, cross-functionally even. Uh, one point, if you're stuck in large group meetings and people are saying that they can do you favors and, and chip in when they can, and zero points if you're going it alone or you just don't have enough of a team, uh, I feel for you because it is uh, there are a lot of curveballs you can run into and you have to get out of your own comfort zone many times to make that happen. So it's not a, it's not a stopper, but uh, it's very difficult to get from here to there. And uh, sin number seven is uh, telling people that it can be done and not showing uh, at Starbucks. Uh, for all the reasons, uh, before the cultural reasons, or because it's advanced technology, or because there are questions about reliability, or because there are questions about costs and uh, operations, all of these things can manifest itself in a, a reasonable question, which is like, well, that's wonderful, but we have other things that we need to do, and this seems a little bit like magic. Uh, so the antidote to that is for the team to uh, be maniacal about building things and have a little bit of an innovation budget in their time where they can actually build things so they can show people this, that the system is working. And if you summarize, like to, to summarize, if you have all these elements, if you have 14 points here, you're in, you're in great shape. Like I salute you for getting it this far. Uh, this should go very smoothly for you and the uh, full force of your company should um, allow you to obtain the benefits of a machine learning system. If you are finding that you're lacking in some spots, you can still get from here to there, but there's a lot of uh, hard work and you know, 50, 60, 70 hour weeks that are required to, 
like master the, the the full spectrum of the skills that are required or to build things in a way to prove your point. Uh, but if you just don't have enough points here, if you are sort of seven or below and you, you really haven't thought of, about some of these things as being priorities, uh, I would urge you to uh, take a hard look at this and try to build a coalition uh, because it is uh, something that is done together and uh, it is a little bit misleading uh, to think that you might be able to uh, take a great idea, take a great piece of code and navigate that world of uh, getting to production uh, without full alignment. Uh, so with that, I'll close and wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Goodbye.